Young Dolph was one of the most respected artists from Memphis, Tennessee. He built his own empire and made it to the top of the rap game, all while staying independent and owning his masters. But Dolph also had serious beef in Memphis and was tragically murdered while visiting a cookie store in his hometown. Let's get right into what happened. On November 17, 2021, rumors started going around on social media after witnesses started posting that young Dolph was shot and killed while visiting Makita's Butter Cookies in South Memphis. A Memphis woman went on IG Live and showed the outside of the shop with the glass front shattered with bullet holes. Police are seen standing around taking statements and she can be heard yelling, they say Dolph dead, y'all. They say Dolph dead, y'all. Not long after that, Memphis police confirmed that the gunshot victim taken away on a stretcher was young Dolph, who was pronounced dead at the scene. The news was a huge shock to the hip hop industry. Everyone from Russ to Meg Thee Stallion to Gucci Mane hopped on social media to mourn the loss as soon as the news was confirmed. Fans were quick to point out that Dolph was in a video on Instagram less than a week ago showing love to Makita's cookies while talking with the owner, claiming that every time he's in Memphis, he stops there. Six days later, the rapper was shot in the exact same spot. Not much info is available about what exactly happened, but witnesses say around 1 p.m., Dolph pulled up to Makita's Cookies, located at 2370 Airways Boulevard, and as he walked into the store, a masked gunman followed him and shot him twice before fleeing. A fan who was on the scene of the shooting admitted that she knew the victim was Dolph even before they brought him out of the store based on the car parked outside. It was a Corvette with a unique camouflage wrap, and she said Dolph was the only one in the city who had that car. This led to speculation that Dolph was seen in his car by his killer and followed to the parking lot. The rapper was known for having his cars bulletproofed after a shooting in 2017 where he was almost killed inside his own whip. But the killer might have known that, which is why he waited until Dolph got out of the car. Police haven't released any official info about a suspect or a motive behind the shooting. But Dolph was a rapper from the streets and had high profile beefs with other artists in Memphis, mainly Yo Gotti. There's no proof that Yo Gotti or his camp had anything to do with the murder but there's already been rumors that the streets of Memphis are on fire right now. They saying Yo Gotti's mother's restaurant and Black Youngster's grandmother's house have both allegedly been shot up in retaliation, but neither of these have been confirmed as of yet, so they just rumors. Young Dolph wasn't just an up and coming rapper who still had one foot in the streets. He was a superstar artist and business owner who leveled up his career only to be killed at the age of 36 over jealousy and hate. Many fans are comparing this to Nipsey Hussle's murder Claiming this is another example of why street-affiliated rappers need to leave their old hood once they get famous. Dolph was born in Chicago, but moved to Memphis, Tennessee when he was just two years old. He had two sisters and two brothers, and his cousins with his artist Key Glock and late rapper Juice World. Growing up, Dolph's parents were both addicted to crack cocaine, and he was mainly raised by his grandmother. So, he started hustling to support himself from a young age. In 2008, he was involved in a car accident that almost killed him and made him realize that he needed to get serious about his music career before it was too late. He dropped his first mixtape, Paper Route Campaign, later that year. Two years later, the rapper started his own independent label, Paper Route Empire, in 2010. Dolph continued to drop mixtapes, which increased his popularity in the city. He was inspired by Memphis legends like 3-6 Mafia, A-Ball, and MJG, and early on, he adopted a similar flow. But over time, he created his own style and personality, which gained him respect and recognition in the city. He started building a buzz with his high-class street music mixtape series and collaborated with other southern rap legends like Gucci Mane and Pee Wee Longway. He also caught Yo Gotti's attention, who wanted to sign him to CMG. Allegedly, Dolph was Gotti's big brother's plug, so he already knew about his reputation in the streets. In 2014, he offered Dolph a deal to sign to a CMG label, but Dolph turned it down and decided to stay independent. This is where the tension between the two rappers first started to form. Dolph confirmed this rumor in an interview with Sway in the Morning, claiming he declined the offer because he ain't want to be seen as Yo Gotti's artist. He wanted to create his own lane, but Gotti took it personal and started hating. After that, Dolph's career kept going up. He dropped the track Cut It with OT Genesis, which went double platinum and peaked at number 35 on Billboard. Later that year, he also dropped his debut album, King of Memphis. Many saw the title as a shot at Yo Gotti, who had also claimed to be the King of Memphis in the past. During that time, Yo Gotti was also making moves and building up his CMG roster. He signed Black Youngster in 2015, who became his protege instead of Dolph. The beef between CMG and Dolph really picked up in February 2016 after Dolph tweeted, Bro, and from being my number one fan and wanting to sign me to being my biggest hater. Hashtag facts. He didn't tag or mention Yo Gotti by name, but it ain't take long for fans to figure out who the tweet was about. After that, 
Dolph continued to sing Gotti, who never commented on the beef in public, but behind the scenes, it was heating up. Not long after that, Black Youngster hopped on social media and stood up for Gotti by calling Dolph a b and denying that he's the king of Memphis. He even captioned the post, when I see that Dolph, I'ma smack the shit out of him on my life. Then, Black Youngster doubled down on the disrespect by showing up to Dolph's hood with a few of his homies looking for the rapper. Dolph responded a few weeks later with an IG video where he accused Yo Gotti of hating on Memphis legends like 3-6, 8-Ball, and MJG. He also dissed Gotti for sending his artists to fight battles for him and for calling the cops on him. He also captioned the video, I guess you still mad cause I didn't never sign with your pussy ass. Or is you still in your feelings cause you fell out with Gucci Mane and you was mad at me cause I kept rocking with Gucci. Black Youngster responded the next day, dropping the diss track, Shake Some, where he raps, Dolph don't want to play, I'm on tour with the K, Mac 11s, Smith & Wessons, extended clip, 100 rounds on the Draco. The video for the song also featured footage from the day he pulled up in Dolph's hood. In February 2017, Dolph dropped a diss track, Play With Your Yo Gotti diss, which really set things off. The album art features a photo of a cell phone with 24 missed calls from Ho Gotti Baby Mama. On the song, Dolph says he slept with Yo Gotti's baby mama, which is part of what started the beef. But Yo Gotti just shrugged it off, tweeting, I'm business partners with Jay-Z and L.A. Reid, and blah, blah, blah. After that, Dolph dropped a video to play with Yo taking the disrespect to the next level, casting a Yo Gotti lookalike who starts crying after Dolph steals his girl. The day after that video dropped, Dolph was in Charlotte, North Carolina for CIAA weekend to perform at a nightclub. He was in a black SUV at 8th and North Caldwell Street when someone started letting off shots. His car was hit a total of 100 times, but surprisingly, no one was injured because the SUV was bulletproof. After the shooting, Dolph got on social media to taunt his attackers, tweeting, you lose, with a laughing emoji. He also still took the stage and performed as scheduled, showing he wasn't phased by the shooting. But despite all the back and forth, Dolph later did an interview where he claimed that there was no real beef and it was all old news. He got pretty quiet when asked about the Charlotte shooting, but he made it clear that he didn't want to make things even worse. In April 2017, he dropped an album called Bulletproof, which peaked at number 36 on Billboard. The album's title was an obvious reference to the shooting. The track listing even spelled out a message to his ops. If you read the songs all in order, it says, 100 shots in Charlotte, but I'm bulletproof. So f them. That's how I feel. I'm so real. I pray for my enemies. I'm everything you want to be. So that's why you envy me, SMH. In May 2017, Black Youngster was arrested in connection with the shooting in Charlotte. He and three other men surrendered themselves to police and were facing several felony charges, but they was all later dropped due to lack of evidence. Black Youngster addressed the allegations in the track I'm Innocent, where he claims that the only reason he was arrested was because Dolph was snitching. Then, on September 26, 2017, Dolph was shot outside of a hotel in downtown Hollywood. Yo Gotti was supposedly staying at the hotel and Dolph and his people went to confront him. A fight broke out and Dolph ended up getting shot. He was brought to the hospital in critical condition after getting hit three times, but he eventually pulled through and made a full recovery. Immediately after the shooting, Yo Gotti was allegedly a person of interest, but no official charges were filed against him. One of his associates, Corey McClendon, got arrested for attempted murder the next day and held on a $1 million bail. But just like Black Youngster, McClendon was later released due to lack of evidence and no one else was ever arrested for the shooting. Dolph later dropped an EP in 2018 called Niggas Get Shot Every Day, referencing the attempt on his life. But surprisingly, after that, the beef started to die down. Both rappers continued to downplay it in interviews and say that it wasn't real beef. They definitely wasn't cool, and it ain't seem likely that a young Dolph and Yo Gotti collab was on the way anytime soon but there was no more high-profile shootings or obvious diss song. But there may have been more going on in the streets that fans ain't know about. There's not enough info about Dolph's murder to know if it was related to the Yo Gotti beef or someone else who had problems with Dolph. But whoever did it started a war in Memphis. Tennessee House Representative London Lamar and Memphis Councilman J.B. Smiley reacted to the news by issuing a citywide curfew to prevent any problems or more violence. So, you know it's already turning up. More info on this story will probably come out as police investigate, so stay posted for updates.